Welcome to another parts video. My name is Randy Clements. I'll be your host for this demonstration. In this video, we're going to take a look at creating MySQL database libraries for Altium. I'm going to do that by way of sharing with you an example of a library that I've been working with for several years now, four or five years with a customer. Um, and the customer is remote. They're in Canada. I'm in Southern California. They also have engineers uh, in other areas, um, and they're all able to work uh, together and collaborate remotely. Anyway, I first started out by going over the components panel and installing a DBLib called Totem DBLib. And if we were to take a look at that um, DBLib file, I'm going to open a project, show you how we created this library. So I have a project called Totem Lib. And notice under the libraries, I have the Totem DB Lib, and I have one um, footprint file called New, PC, uh, New PCB Lib, and I have one schematic file called New Schlib. And then these files were um, committed to the repository, and then other users only need to come around and download the project just like any other project, and then they have the library installed on their local machine. So I've opened the dblib here so you can take a look at it. Of course, this is a fictitious connection string because I don't want to share with you the actual server or the customer's username or password. But you can see that this um, was done uh, on US West RDS, Amazon, AWS, that part of, of the string is true. Um, the rest of the server name has been uh, obscured and the username has been obscured and the password's been obscured uh, for this demonstration. Um, but anyway, once the dblib um, string was entered in there, we can look at the uh, records in the database. The database in this case, as indicated here, it is hosted on Amazon Web Services, um, creating a cloud-based remote library um, that can be used and uh, users can collaborate from anywhere in the world. Okay, so let's get out of there. I'm not going to save the changes. Again, like I said, I don't want you to actually have a look at the customer's real server name or their password or username, obviously. But anyway, the point was is that all we needed to do was add three files to a project, the dblib, uh, one footprint, and one symbol, and we committed that. Now, next we're going to take a look at the library using the parts front end. So again, we here we have the, the Totem AWS, and this is an application um, called Parts, and it connects to the library and simplifies library maintenance and adding new parts to the library. Um, but notice here that we have some buttons that are associated with um, Git repositories. So I'm going to hit this Explore button for a moment, which allows us to look at the, where the front end is installed. This is the front end application. The back end folder is just where our footprints are. So remember, this project was downloaded. Here it is right here. That's just a backup of the footprints. The actual footprints are here. Notice there's 1,206 footprints. There's, looking at the symbols, a little over 1,000, 1,075 symbols currently. Um, so for version control, you do want to keep your symbols and footprints in single part libraries. Otherwise, you would not be able to have version control. Um, some people don't seem to understand the need for that, but it's uh, the way version control works that you need to keep your, your footprints and libraries in single files. That way, you know when the file changed, you know that footprints changed. If you had hundreds of footprints in one large file, all you would know is that something has changed in that file. You wouldn't know which footprints change. So that's the need for, for single part footprints and libraries. And also, you'll have less conflict between users when they're creating new parts, new footprints and new symbols if you have single part libraries. Anyway, and there was our Totem Lib project. It looked just like any other uh, project. And uh, you can see we're under um, Git. 
which is version control. And I've also install, installed Tortoise Git on my machine. You'll need to install Tortoise Git if you'd like to um, submit more footprints and symbols to the repository. And this is because, you know, you may recall that in the library, there was 1,200 footprints and there was over 1,000 symbols. Ultium cannot handle 1,000 footprints and symbols inside this project panel. So you, if you were to try to attach them all, the tool would crash. Um, but Ultium doesn't have any problem uh, if you want to create the repository and then just use a tool like Tortoise Git. Uh, with the parts front end, the only thing is, is we've integrated Tortoise Git. So for example, if I select pull, say OK, uh, we can see the Tortoise Git shell has gone out and we can see that we're connected to Amazon file services on uh, ultium365.com. That's our project repo. And currently we're up to date. Of course, if we would make any changes um, or add, want to add new parts, we simply need to select commit and add those new parts or submit those changes. And other users could do a poll to, to get those changes. And that's really all there is to, uh, to creating a, a MySQL database library. It's extremely simplified. Um, when you download the parts application um, under tools, you can create these MySQL scripts by pressing this button. And then there you would have some scripts. And then if you install the MySQL Workbench, and, you, and also if you want to create a local server, you would install a, a MySQL server on your network. But in this example, we're using Amazon Web Services. So anyway, we're going to connect to, excuse me, pick the wrong one. I want to go to Totem. So we can see in here that we've got our, our parts. And here's our 2,900 and I believe 13 parts in this library here. Um, but anyway, if we didn't already have um, the database, we would just simply go up under file, open an SQL script, we would open up, for example, the parts table script, and we would execute that script using the lightning bolt here, and that would create our table. Also, you will need to hit the refresh button right here after you run the script um, to see the, to refresh the schemas and, and tables view. Otherwise, you won't see them until you hit the refresh. But anyway, that's all there really is, and you just repeat the process for the manufacturer links and the supplier links. And you're pretty much done. You have yourself a MySQL library hosted on Amazon Web Services. Thanks for watching the video. If you've got any questions, as always, you can contact me over at, at pcbpartsblogspot.com. From there, you can select a... Um, let me get over to the blog. You can select the contact parts, and then from there you can enter your username, uh, your email address, and leave me a question or a comment. I'd be happy to get back to you and give you a demonstration or help you out with your installation if you're having any issues. Again, thanks for watching the video, and as always, if you have any questions, feel free to give me a contact. Thank you.